take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. And welcome back to what I hope is the final episode for this machine, this 1895 Singer 15. And I know now, thank you Bob Fowler, that it is a 1511, not a 1530. Um, but I am going to basically, my, my intention is to reverse the process of how I took her apart, just reverse that whole process and put her back together that way. Um, you can see that her clear coat is set nicely. I think that she's looking lovely. The um, thing that I got done this morning is I polished up her wheel. I didn't polish it to a super high gloss. If I worked on it for about another 15 minutes, I probably could get it there. But this is where it is right now. I think it's it looks nice. Um, so yeah, I'm going to turn the camera down a little bit closer and just get started reassembling her. Okay, so the first thing I put in here is my needle bar. Um, there is this part here that goes onto that post, and then this clamp goes on there. And I put a drop of oil in each little piece to make sure that it will turn easily slide my needle bar through Oops, came off the post I need to tighten everything up here okay so now that I have this on I'm just going to tighten up this screw here holding that little dog bone looking piece on and that's moving okay so now with it at the lowest point here I'm going to a screw onto my screwdriver and there is a hole back here that I need to put said screw through um, all the way through and screw it in back here to hold all of this all of this together I'm just going to screw it in from the back okay so it's all connected together I will be doing final adjustments on needle height later this is actually still on here pretty loose. I want to be able to move it around, but I don't want it to fall out. So now I'm going to work on the presser bar. I'm just going to put a drop of oil in these threads up here and in this bottom. And this little piece here that's going to go in that slot and slide up and down. I actually have a drop of oil on either side. So it can move up and down, and I can see that's okay. So while that I'm holding that in place, I'm just going to slide my needle bar, I mean my presser bar, all the way down. And again, I'm not worrying too much about exact height and placement right now. Just kind of putting it together. Get it started here, and tighten up again just enough that it's going to hold it. I will do my final adjustment later. This machine did not have a washer up on top and I don't think I have an extra one uh, right now. Wait, I might. Hold on a second. I have a old 201 that's kind of like my organ donor machine and I just pulled the washer from that machine out and it should be the same size thankfully. So now I can just, I'm not going to screw this in all the way either, just enough to get it started. Um, I will finish adjusting all of that later. She just took that cap off because I want to move this up enough that I can put my presser foot 
lever on. So let me go ahead and get this screwed on right here. I want to make sure I don't lose my washer up here again, so I'm just going to set that in my little, my little magnetized bin. Okay. So now that's working very well. Okay, and the last part up here on top is this, which is the thread take up lever has this little bearing here. I want to make sure I oil that. And it has this large, beautiful, flat screw head. Okay, so I just put in this thread take-up lever. I just kind of feed it in from the front, put the little screw in there. And I had to do a little bit of extra cleaning and oiling because it was a little sticky. But we worked through that. Now I think that that is good. So ready to move on. Um, I do have all of my little particles that are going to go down here that are part of holding on the needle, holding on the presser foot. I'm just going to set those aside for right now until I get to the point that I'm ready to set my timing. Okay, I'm going to put the connecting rod back on and as close as I can tell it's going on this way because that looks like we're one of those uh, pivoty um, tapered type of screws would fit and I should be going that direction so I'm hoping for the best. I do know that up at the top there is a mark on one side so you can see I have like a hash mark there so I know that these sides both go together that that would be wrong and that would be right and I did clean out the old wick and I put a brand new oil wick in here and so once it's in place, I'll reach through and oil it. So that's my goal right now. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take me. So I just wanted to tell you what my plan is, is to put this in here, set this up on top, flip the whole machine upright somehow, and then try to screw these two screws in from the top. Okay, so I got that in. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. I don't even know if you can see in there, but once I got it in, I did go and put some fresh oil in the um, little wick, and I could do all that from this little hole up here. So now I need to put my fork on. It's going to go this way, and then this is the block for it, you know, different. That's going to go on here, and then this is the screw that comes from the outside. Actually, it's gonna go this way. This was just like welded together when I got it so that there couldn't be any adjustment. So I'm really happy that I have it cleaned off now. So when this moves, that's the adjustment. And then this part right here is where the knob on the outside right here is gonna go to be able to move it up and down, okay? So you can't see all that inside, so that's why I did it here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole little mechanism in. Okay, so over here underneath, if you remember, I did not take this shaft out because I'm too chicken to punch out these pins, you know, maybe another time. And because of that, this little piece here was trapped and could not come off. So. I pulled off this bar, cleaned it. I tried to clean this in place, cleaned out in here where this little fork is, and did the best I could. So now I have to put this piece back on. I know I'm going to have a ton of adjustments. You know, I can hear it now, but I'm just going to take it one step at a time. Okay, so that is as good as I'm going to get it right now. I will make adjustments. Uh, later to make sure that I get my feed dogs lined up correctly but for right now this is good I'm gonna go ahead and put my feed dogs back on Try to get these funky little screws these screws are partially stripped so I want to be very careful that I don't injure them 
Okay, so I've got my needle plate back on, my presser feet on, and I was able to make adjustments so that I'm pretty sure I have it positioned correctly, you know, going this direction, okay? I haven't adjusted anything, you know, forward and aft and everything yet, but this way I think I am good, so that's a good start. So this arm is going to be going in here, like this, this little slot right there is where this bearing goes so I have cleaned and oiled to that area very well and this bar I'm going to have one of these tapered screws that's going to need to go through here and this upper eyelet area here and I've got a little nut to close it up I think these are called pivot screws. Is that what it's called, a pivot screw? I'm not too sure. All right, let me get a screwdriver so I can set that before I let my nut go. And now I've got the same type of screws that are down here. These little pointy, sorry Bob, don't remember the technical name. But those little screws, I'm gonna put one in each side here just to get it started to hold this in place and then I'll make finer adjustments once I have it held in so it just won't fall down. Okay so now that this part is in I think I have it set pretty well. I need to put this shaft in here and again we have our same little pivot screws to go in each side here to hold it in place. And lastly, I have this one little pivot screw down here that I'm going to connect the bottom of that fork to this piece. Please be in here the right way, please, please. It wasn't fitting. And I was panicking for a moment and um, I had these two reversed. The screw that goes in here looks exactly like this one, but it's slightly smaller. So I'm switching those out and all shall be well again. And I got all that connected in the back underneath and I think I have my feed dogs adjusted correctly so I don't mean to get too excited but so far, so far so good. Now when I was cleaning all my parts I totally took this mechanism apart, cleaned it, put it back together. So now I should be ready just to go ahead and set this in. So I've got her up on her little rear end. I'm just going to set it in here, hopefully, and put my two screws in. Hold on, let me turn her. Let's set it in this way. There we go. Okay, i got a couple long screws to put in there. That will be that. Okay, I've set her into an empty treadle cabinet because she's a singer, so she fits my generic singer treadle cabinet. And that way I can do all of the fine tuning without, you know, having to tip her upside down. And then we can test her out. This is the bobbin that came with her. The little, little arm sticking up. What is that? Almost noon, one o'clock. I've got it in. And I'm just going to pop that in down here, just so I don't lose it. Okay, next. I want you to see I have the bobbin winding mechanism all cleaned up and put back. Now when I took this apart, there was no spring in here. And I can't find one in any of my donors that's going to fit that. Um, it's still going to work. It's still going to work. It's just, you know, not going to have that spring. But as this fills up, when the bobbin gets full, it's going to snap up to there. And I think that that's going to be fine. So then when it's time to start a bobbin, you just press it down. You know, the only thing that's different is um, this isn't going to have a spring that's going to want to pull it back down. But I don't think that 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 really makes a big difference right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back on here. I just spent some time <clears throat> changing the belt on here. I got one of these clear poly belts, which has a lot of grab. I think that it's fabulous, very excited about that. 
And while I was cleaning all my parts, I went through and cleaned all of the parts in my tension mechanism and put it back in. So I'm just going to put my whole face plate back on over here. Um, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hold off doing that until after I have set my needle bar height and everything. Because why put it on when you're just going to take it right back off again? So what I need to do is put my presser foot, um, my clamp, everything here so that I can get these two adjusted right. When you're putting the needle bar stuff back together, you have to put this thread guide on first because it's the tip of the screw that holds on the thread guide, which is going to act as the stopper, the uppermost stopper for your needle when you slide it in. So once that is in, then I can come back and put this on. And I did put the thread cutter on the presser foot on the presser bar. Um, I don't use them. I'm just wondering if anybody actually uses those thread cutters. You know, okay. I still have this needle bar pretty loose. You can see it's swiveling all over the place. I will get that tightened up when I get my um, needle bar position adjustment made. Okay, so I think I think I have it set correctly now, but I'm not going to know for sure until I actually try to sew. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plate on the front because I need that on so I can run my thread through the tension assembly. I'm just going to set this on here. It polished up so pretty. I'm really, really pleased with this. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this on and get her threaded. She sews. I still need to get the tension dialed in, but just the fact that everything is working and she is making stitches makes me so happy. You could not believe it. That moment when you put the needle down and bring it up and it brings the bobbin thread up with it and you know that everything's gonna be right with the world, that moment is just priceless. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting all the plates on, and we're going to give her a real test run. Finally, I'm going to put her sh now shiny little star plate back on her little bat peephole. She is making perfect stitches. So excited. Here we go. Thank you. 